used to be out on the corner, he was dealing in drugs. Got himself a barber's uh -huh. chair and gave him some cuts. <laughs> he her his life and talk about it. This is my life, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yep. Guys, my parents are in town. They just drove out in an RV. They came out from Staten Island. Mm -hmm. He did a 3,000 mile drive. First thing my dad said when he walked in this place, he saw Nerf take a piss and he said, I think it's time to take him to the vet and put him down. And what did I say to you? What did he say? I said, I think it's time <laughs> we take you to the vet and put you down. <laughs> well, if I start peeing on a floor like that, uh, you, you got my You have permission. a couple more of those beers, I think, you know. <laughs> you I think I've permission. seen you piss uh, in, in public before a few times. Didn't you get a urinating in public ticket at no, the beach? No, I did not. No, it was drinking in public and it wasn't urinating. <laughs> so we brought Nerf in. We have a Nerf cam. It was highly requested. So it's going to be an exciting episode. It's a 9-11 special. Kyle, you could still hit sound bites back there. Don't be, don't be shy. It's not going to be that emotional and sad, you know, we're going to try to keep it fun in case we got any taliban listeners out there you know we want to make sure everybody has a good time listen to this we all have our own 9-11 experiences here and i just watched that netflix documentary they just put one out a docu-series about it it's like 10 parts long they interviewed people that were in like chicago and they weren't even in the same state realize i'm sitting on a gold mine here my own mother was on the 44th floor of tower one the first one to get hit mm -hmm. you know spoiler alert she made it out thank god this is gold right here you know netflix did a terrible job at it so this is your your moment your time to shine ma we're coming up on the, the 20th anniversary, anniversary so yes. it's okay to make jokes about it now we all have six senses of humor that i've gotten from you guys we could get into your story later Okay. I could tell my story because I have a funny experience. And we could breeze through his because he was asleep the whole time. <laughs> it's true. He and that's, that's what makes Not my... the whole time. Kyle, do you know 9-11? Are you yeah. familiar with it? Were you alive for that? Yeah, I he was. was. like eight days old. You no, were... I was like, that happened in 2001. So I was one. Yeah. It was a horrible day. So don't get too crazy and disrespectful with the sound bites back there. Otherwise, you're really going to piss my mom off and she will come back there and kill you like she did the <laughs> no, terrorists. You, there were some ISIS members in there that you snapped their necks, right? <laughs> Hit him with a Mark McGuire bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys listen to the podcast. Of course. Too many curses, you mm -hmm. tell me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to keep the curses to a minimum. Okay. Guys, Kyle. Mm. Keep that they trailer park. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I was just trying to put some of the blame on the other guys. I'm, Jeff, I'm the guy that's what's your excuse? I say the F word a lot now. I wasn't allowed to growing up. No. But things have changed. You saw me on the drive over here. <laughs> <laughs> the that's where I get it from. Actual. Is you. My anger issues with just normal things. Traffic is a normal I'm thing. I'm mentally ill. Yeah, I'm mentally ill. <laughs> okay, so let's get into my story quick. I'll try to run through it fast, but okay. um, it's pretty funny. I mean, it's not funny. It was one of the darkest days of my life. I think it is probably part of the reason I, uh, just the way I kind of lashed out around 12, and then I became like a bad kid. I was the black sheep of the family. Only one to ever get arrested. <laughs> I was in school and school had just started because in New York, school starts September right. 9th, I think it started. And right. then this is probably like my second okay. or third day of school. And I was in French class when my French teacher got a phone call in the middle of class and she went mm -hmm. over and she answered it. She freaked out. She was like absolutely broke down on the phone. Then she hangs up the phone. And I guess because she had to keep the class calm, like they don't want to let people panic mode and people start killing each other. She comes right back to class and she's just like, okay, kids, everything's fine. Uh, Parlez-vous français or whatever. And at this point, we don't care what's going on because we're like, what the hell just happened on that phone call? Besides, the French weren't going to help us either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn a single word of French after this. I didn't trust this woman ever again. She was like, okay, everything's fine. But Timmy and, and Mike and Anthony, you guys have to go home. Your parents are here to pick you up. Five minutes goes by and then another phone call and then another 10 kids are taken out of class and everybody's parents are showing up to pick them up because New York City is under attack and we don't know if a nuke is about to hit us. I'm just like, all right, whatever, like somebody will come pick me up soon too. And now I make it to third period, fourth period. Now there's like 20 percent of the school is left maybe 10 percent of the school it's just me and a few other kids and we're in lunch these kids they start hearing rumors and they start like spreading like gossip about what's going on because we had no tvs no cell phones no nothing so nobody knew anything in school and they tried to you know not let the kids know what was going on these kids heard that new york city was under attack and they blew up the world trade center and i'm like knowing in my head that you went to work that day but also like in my head i'm like okay my mom might be dead but i need to you know not let these kids see me be weak so I'm like, are you sure? And they blew up the World Trade Center and, and I'm like panicked, but also, you know, just trying to keep it cool. And then sure enough, he shows up. This is the first time I've ever seen like uncertainty in his face when like I asked if he had known anything about you. 
And normally he's always like, yeah, whatever, everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna kill the dog. It's, it's too old, it just happens, this is life. And this is the first time I ever saw him be like, all right, just pray to God, you know, just pray, say your prayers. I didn't know, and I didn't know how to respond to you. You know, like, I didn't want to say, you know, everything was going to be just fine and dandy. You know, you, I know your mother's safe, because we didn't know. All these other kids had left school already, and they had no attachment. I doubt all of them had parents that were in the actual tower. So if anybody should have been taken out of school, it should have been me to go home and find out what was going on. <laughs> but you were a bus driver. Or I won't say bus driver. You worked at the bus depot and you work nights and you were asleep while all this stuff happened and you had no idea what was going on so you okay but let me now tell my okay story. yeah we'll get it into your story so after i made sure you guys got off to school i used to go to sleep i worked from 11 at night to 7 in the morning yeah you guys went to to school and i went to sleep so this particular morning the phone starts ringing and i wouldn't answer it you know same thing i do yeah when these guys yeah. call me uh, after hours i'm done i'm done with work i don't want to hear anything my phone's on but this is my time to sleep so mm -hmm. it's probably a solicitor i'm not answering yeah the doorbell starts ringing and i'm like what is it today that everybody i'm trying to sleep here yeah so uh finally you know the doorbell rings again and i i get up and it's on neighbor glenna and she says turn on the tv and when I turned on the TV, there it was, the burning trade center. That, that's how I found out. Yeah. And I didn't sleep through the whole thing. I was actually awake before the building came down. So you didn't think about coming to get, get me from school? <laughs> Hell no. You were safe in school. I was concerned about your mother. He was yeah. Like, no no that, shit. That, so that, was I. I, I, I was getting that, told in, in school by the two kids that were left, they blew up all of New York City. Everyone's dead. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, cool. That's cool. Whatever. I don't care. What? I take back everything I said about you from <laughs> then on. <laughs> this was a, a traumatizing moment. I was certain they had blown up the towers. They blew up the building that I knew my mom went to work. That day, I had seen her leave that morning. I've been through some scary moments, but that was probably the scariest. Can I tell you from your brother's perspective? We'll get into that. So, so you find out, you put on the TV, and then what's your immediate thought? Well, I got a phone call from my niece whose husband was a um, Port Authority uh, detective. And he was on the 80th floor of the mm -hmm. building. His, his office. His office. But he luckily was, you know, getting coffee, uh, you know, downstairs. But when you turned on the, the TV now, this was just when the planes had hit the building and they hadn't fallen down yet. Right. Okay, so when you saw the building fall down, I'm sure then you went a little nuts. Like I said, my niece called and she was screaming and she says i spoke to john and he's okay but um you know like why are you so calm Cause there was absolutely nothing i can do you couldn't go there you know to the to <laughs> Ner nerve nerve just did, ripped yeah, one bad <laughs> yeah oh man that's horrible <laughs> That, that's another I can't even focus why, on this. Why we should take him to the vet. <laughs> oh, damn. That one is bad. That one's rancid. <laughs> okay, try to get through it. It's just... You know, like she was panicked mm -hmm. and she's saying, how are you calm? I take it back. This is now the worst moment of my life having to breathe in this, this stinking dog's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible that's lingering i can't even continue it like, it is kind of yeah rancid. share it out <laughs> <laughs> you see you love those fart jokes I, that's the one thing that we don't see eye to eye on these fart jokes i don't think farts are that funny no. these guys have a good laugh every time i rip one by accident when i'm peeing in the bathroom or something Nah, there's nothing funnier than a fart <laughs> we grew up on different shows you grew up on three stooges i do comedy for a living i guess technically so go ahead i before i interrupt so you, you get the call she was hysterical and she had spoken to a husband and he was alive me i didn't know whether your mom was alive and i was calm it was nothing i could do also let me elaborate you guys are married for 40 years and you're happily married right <laughs> yes because some people in marriages would be like oh thank god no, you know no but no, no we we both love my mother here <laughs> and we were worried that Something had happened to her. I was concerned, probably in shock. And I Wait, couldn't call yeah. him. And it's funny, we waited 20 years to talk about this moment. Mm. <laughs> we never got into it. It's weird, and now we do it on camera. 
mm-hmm. and sell it, milk it. No, we've talked about it. But we, talk, we talk about like it a little bit, but we don't, we don't get too into detail right. because we don't like to get emotional. I would be struck when I was a kid if I got emotional. So now there was a few minutes where I was left alone in the house. There was this laundry basket at the top of the stairs. Mother had done the laundry the night before. And on top of the pile of the folded laundry was her nightgown. And she had a medal of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And she used to pray the rosary all the time. And I looked at that medal on her nightgown. And I knew that one way or another, things were gonna be all right, whether she made it out or not. We went to church, confession, we mm-hmm. received communion on Sunday. Uh, we were in good grace with God. Uh, the medal was there and I said, if I don't see her tonight, you know, I will see her again some other time. Uh, that every, everyone's gonna think you're big softy over here. You're almost making me tear up. That's- this is probably the first time that I told that story where I didn't actually cry. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting emotional over it, but I don't want to lose my street cred here. I'm going to try to make it through this whole episode without, or this podcast, without crying on camera. I'm done. I cry at night. I'm done with that. So your faith in God helped you in that situation? Sure, sure. Would you guys be mad if I told you I hadn't been to church no. in over a year? Well, on the way out here, I got pretty sick and my stomach was good. I said, God, please. Uh, you get me through this. I'll never have another drink. <laughs> but you see how that turned out. I'm I'm feeling okay. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Is you gonna help him? Yeah, no. Drink up, Dad. Let's get you telling some jokes. I told you write a bunch of Taliban jokes, and we can mix those in with emotional stories. So. You know, everybody go, loves a good uh, ISIS joke or something like that. You know, I, I, we don't want to get too crazy, but I told the guys, have fun with this. Mm-hmm. Do you want to start from the beginning with yeah, your story? Yeah, tell a story. All right, well. Start from when you woke me up. Karen was away at school, college. You know, it was just you and Steven home at the time. So, yeah, we got you up. I got ready for work, but I remember it was a beautiful day. Yeah. A gorgeous day. And here I took the ferry to work. Uh, I was feeling good, and I was stalling that morning. And I never felt like that. It it was kind of like an intuition I think I got. I actually went to a store to just browse around and I'm like, "Ah, darn it, I wish I really didn't have to go to work today. And you know, it was just a routine and you know, you get to work and take the elevators up. Now where I worked was the 44th floor of the first building that was hit, One World Trade Center. But you know, I got my coffee in the morning. You you see the same people every day. And I remember I used to go to that office and you would take Steven and I there. Yeah, Steven, my brother, not this moron that we have here sometimes. (laughs) Um, He probably wasn't even alive then, the little weasel. Mm. He doesn't know anything about anything, but (laughs) um, yeah, you would take Steven and I there when we were little kids. I have little memories of like running around. We had those little like uh, laser guns, like Nerf guns or something. Mm -hmm. We would like have like shootouts in the office, office. like run around the office. It was a pretty cool place to work. I loved working there. Mm -hmm. I loved being in that building. You love the city, you love Manhattan. I love the city, love Manhattan. I just- You even went back and worked at the new one when they built the new one. Well, across from the new one. Where building seven was? No, it wasn't where- Building seven was. It's sort of more closer uh, to the Hudson River side. So okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me let you tell your story because everybody in the comments always says I just interrupt and I keep asking questions in my mind. I, I have ADD or whatever, but you do. There's no proof Sugar, of that. Yeah. Steven's in live. Live in here. <laughs> <laughs> you brought this guy in here. <laughs> you were talking shit to him. I fucking do know about 9 11. Don't like, curse in front of my parents, Stephen. I was a year old. Yeah. Okay, no F words in front of my parents. I'm sorry. You see this jerk comes in I'm here so throwing F words around? Oh, I didn't mean that. We're a religious family, Stephen. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was the only one who. Hi. Okay, this is Stephen. Yeah, this is. Hi, Stephen. My new uh, intern, assistant, <laughs> bottom of the barrel employee. He's the <laughs> lowest on the totem pole. He's fun to look at. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, his stupid face, you know. He <laughs> he has COVID, so we don't want to bring him in here and risk, you know, infecting you guys because you're a, you know you're high risk technically, and you're a paranoid freak when it comes to this stuff. When I was a kid, and I used to <laughs> cough a little bit in the car, you'd tell me get out and take the bus <laughs> if you were driving me to school in the morning. You'd throw me out of the car if I had sneezed or anything. And this is way, way before pandemics and viruses spreading yeah, around. but I catch stuff easily. I do too, actually. <laughs> I, maybe you were both hypochondriacs. Okay, the 9-11 okay. special. We need to tell your story here. Okay. I need to stop That's interrupting. Dark piece. Let's get into the dark piece now, Mom. You can tell your story. The elevator that I took to get to my floor 
was the one to go to the sky lobby, which was the floor I worked on. If you worked on the higher floors, you would take the elevator that I took, then transfer over on my floor to the other, the higher floors. So you see people every day. All right, so now I get to work, and my uh, supervisor, she was on the phone at the time. Shelly. Shelly. And then boom. Boom, the loudest explosion I ever heard. Jesus. I'm sorry. I, I just want to I, I want to lighten the mood a little bit. I mean, okay. <laughs> they were oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, I, no, I, no more. No I, more sound bites. No more, no more sound bites. No more. I emotional part. what floor the plane hit? She was, was on 44th floor. The first plane hit in the 60th, right? Uh, yeah, cl- probably 60 and above. So this is why I keep these 20-year-old idiots around. Because mm-hmm. when you're doing stuff like this, these shows, you <laughs> tell a story like you're explaining it to kids. So I have... These people ask, you know, they chime in with their questions and it makes it easier to tell the story sometimes. The plane hits. The, the plane hits. Bends. So like oh, I'm up what? by the copier and it, it felt like the building bent over and stood back up. And then there was all this rumbling. And we had plaques on our walls, like of all our- the Picture frames. Yeah, presidents and stuff of our association. They came right down. The lights were flickering. My supervisor- That's well, not a sound bite. There's a helicopter. Is that? Outside. I was going to say, <laughs> no, are no, you, no, no, you no, sound no. biting this right now? Another <laughs> no, plane coming no. through. There's a helicopter outside. <laughs> God damn. And, and we, she dropped a phone. We hugged each other like, what was that? But I had fallen over because the impact made me fall. Dang. And I stood up and- You fell down? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I never knew that. Well, you know what? I sort of forgot about that, but she reminded me when no. I had just recently saw her, and I told you on our way out here, we stopped. She now lives in Columbus, Ohio, so we stopped to see her. We didn't know what it was. We thought it was maybe like an explosion because the cafeteria was below <laughs> our floor, but the kitchen was on our floor. We thought maybe something blew up in the kitchen, but it was just too powerful. I mean, like I said, Everything, it was still rumbling, like a rumbling sound and shaking. My office had no windows, so I went to go look out someone else's office where the windows were, and I saw debris coming from above us, like papers and all. Yeah. And I said to her, whatever happened, happened above us. So I grabbed my stuff, and I headed for the door, and she reminded me when I saw her, she said that you grabbed your stuff right away, and you said, I have to leave. I have kids. She told you to stay? She stayed another 10 minutes after i did i headed right for the stairwell i thought like after the first plane hit they said it was just an accident a plane hit the building that was but the you second could... building that they told people oh they told worry. people to stay in the second building what? don't worry everything's okay they said it was yeah. just the plane that accidentally hit the first tower and, but they weren't they didn't have any then, video a clear video of the first building getting hit there's like one or two videos no commercial airlines were supposed to fly over manhattan you didn't expect that nobody expected so people thought it was a cessna or a small plane at yes the time. because when i got in the stairwell we all went down calm people were going in the stairwell just calm smoke? walking down was there any like fire or smoke that you could like smell or not at that time yeah no. they were smoking weed in the staircase no oh. no no but i know what he well, means not, yeah. Yeah. yeah they were smoking uh-huh. jewels <laughs> yeah but <laughs> puffing vapes they the do down. they do jewel breaks in the stairwells <laughs> <laughs> somebody in the stairwell had a cell phone and he was able to find out that the building was hit by a plane so we thought well maybe it was a small cessna or something yeah. like that not knowing anything but it was a good thing we didn't know because nobody was panicking yeah so we walked all the way down, and then once we got to the, like say the third floor, water was gushing in. So you blazed through that. That was for water? forty-one floors. Forty-four. Yeah, but then you got to the third floor, and there's yeah. water. Was water there water was like, coming through? So like sprinklers that, and stuff. Yeah, or, uh, probably. Oh, because the fuel shot down the elevator shafts and burned people that were in the lobby, right? I think so. To death, like mm. people died. Mm. They got oh burned. My God. People outside got burnt from the fuel too that you know had i because it was a ball of fire that yeah. just of gasoline on fire that just doused you when i got to the first floor the security guards they were like guiding people just run they pointed us a direction over the uh, west side highway there was a pedestrian bridge and it was all enclosed in glass so it took you over the west side highway into the world financial center and they said just keep running don't look back they didn't say why they just said don't look back the reason why bodies were falling so I just kept running and running. I had no idea what happened. Mm-hmm. Nobody did. And by the time I got out, the both buildings were on fire. Oh, so the oh. second plane had, so you didn't had already hit plane, yeah, by the time you were out. The second plane had already hit the second While building. While you were going down the stairs? Yes. How long did it take the the like full tower to just collapse? Once I got outside and I saw things that I really didn't want to see, there were bodies falling or jumping from... 
the top because these people had no place to go. You saw people that were trapped, that were trapped, and they had no way of getting out. There was nothing you could do. There it was, was either burned to death or yeah. jump. And saw I saw the jumpers. Saw, yeah, I saw the jump. And those were the people that used to take the elevator up, up from the sky lobby. So mommy saw all those people every day going up, and she knew those were the people that weren't making right, it out. Right. And you know, I did see people in the stairwell in wheelchairs talk about survivor's guilt. I said, man, if I could have just done something. I, you know, like just was, throw somebody on your shoulder and carry them yeah, out? Yeah, but I couldn't, you know, do that. And then once I saw what I saw outside and I said, I just can't stay around and watch this. So I headed for the ferry and I just started walking because I still had no idea what happened. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the two buildings burning and, and, and people jumping and or falling and people trapped at this point in time he had no way of like like letting jeff or no or mr whittick no, like, okay. no, there's the no, cell phone the no uh the cell phone tower was on top of the first building so there was no communication uh, i couldn't okay. use my cell phone that's why i couldn't call home uh -huh. but then again but i would I, I probably wouldn't have called home because i knew he was sleeping yeah <laughs> so i'm like oh during all this you figured, at me for oh, somebody up. wasn't gonna worry <laughs> Wake me up <laughs> anyway, I get to the Staten Island Ferry. I get in and there were a lot of people there and they were just looking to flee Manhattan. And people are saying to me, what do we do when we get to Staten Island? And I said, well, maybe you get a taxi, get home that way. But you know, Staten Island has like four bridges, right? So they had closed the bridges. You didn't think to stop at a pay phone or something? <laughs> you could have I mean, you could have maybe, uh, you know, through one of us. There were lines at the pay phones. And I'm oh, like, yeah, oh, let me right. just get out of here. It's like what I do with like stuff. Like I want like shock value. Like oh, I'm here, you know. I just had to get out of there. You know, I just let me get out and I'll explain things when I get home. You know, um, what, are you crazy? I got to spend a quarter. I'll see him in a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to spend a quarter. Yeah, we're going nuts. Him and I, we've had our only emotional moment together in life, probably. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah. yeah let him uh, wait. Yeah, let him wait. <laughs> Let's build this up a little bit. Let him wait. Yeah. I'm going to waste a quarter calling him. He's not going to pick the phone up. He's yeah, sleeping. yeah, you don't want to waste a quarter. What is he going to know? You so, can't see the, the, the towers from Staten Island? Yeah, yes. you can. Yes. You can? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, wow. From so, the home? That, well, that's yeah. what my son saw. My it's brother's the, school was facing directly. His classroom faced the New York City skyline, and he saw he saw the, the plane fly in from his classroom. Wow. Whoa. And his School was about six miles away from our house. And you guys would take the same bus, right? Because it would go that yes. direction. So yes. you'd take the same bus. So you, yes. he knew you went to work. You, you, yeah. You guys oh, yeah. rode there together. He knew you were in that tower by that time. Oh, yeah. He and he knew. saw the plane hit it. And he's so nuts. My brother, my brother named Stephen, like you, Stephen, <laughs> he is very shy, quiet. He just got up. And he just got up. And the teacher said, where are you going? He said, I got to leave. My mom works in that building. Yeah. So the teacher just knew let him go. He walked six miles home oh. thinking his mother was dead. Why didn't you walk like, him, Jeff? Why didn't I walk home? Because I was 10 yeah. years old. I was waiting for my dad to come out. And I, I was getting told rumors in school that they blew up all of Manhattan. Every, the, whole, the whole entire city was burned down. Just like jump rope. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in lunch now. And, and, and yeah, I just couldn't. I was in shock, I guess, too. I couldn't really comprehend it. And then you yeah. came and picked me up. We went home and you didn't know. And I was it was emotional. And you told me to. Go in the backyard. We had the rose garden. You told me to pick a flower and have it for your mom when she gets home. You came walking up the street. And you were dusty. No, you were a little dusty because I got out. Okay, I make I these think... things up in my imagination. I got a serious problem. I like add the stories. To... Was it was it Kyle or Oscar that asked me about uh, when did the buildings come down? Uh, it was me. Once I got into the ferry terminal and talking to the people, then all of a sudden you heard. Da, 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 da. We thought a sniper was hitting the uh, the ferry terminal. I still didn't know what it was because then the doors opened up and we all, like cattle, got on the ferry. Now, I've taken the ferry like 20 years back and forth to work. I've never seen a life preserver. That day, people were grabbing life preservers. Then I found out on the ferry, just talking to people, it was a terrorist attack. But we were afraid on the ferry because we were like an open target there. Yeah, yeah. So um, the ferry is, is a, it's a free boat back and forth mm -hmm. from Staten Island to Manhattan and it's public transportation. That's how you got back and forth to work every day. Yes. The boat ride over to the city. Yes. Whoa, really? 
That's cool. Yes. Yeah. One of, you get out yeah. to your boat every day? Stephen, Stephen Grigal, you got to ride a boat every day. It's not the kind of boat you want to ride. There's a lot of crackheads and scumbags <laughs> really? oh, and thieves. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the bottom of the boat, everybody used to smoke weed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Kyle would be at. He'd be down on the bottom of the boat. <laughs> okay, today's episode is sponsored by the Taliban. What? We're taking money from the Taliban now? DraftKings. Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Now is the time to celebrate. The NFL is finally back, and DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, has millions of reasons why you should be excited to kick off the football season. DraftKings has given new customers a free shot at a $1 million top prize with a total of $4 million up for grabs for tonight's or Thursday, depending on when this comes out, it's opener. Getting in on Thursday night single game showdown is easy. You draft six players from the season opener, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Download the DraftKings app now and use code JeffFM. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize and $4 million in total prizes. Enter code JeffFM for a free shot at the $1 million prize. That's the top prize with your first deposit. That's code JeffFM only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required for eligibility. See DraftKings.com for details. Back on with the show. Jeff, Jeff. Yeah, yeah Steven. What's a terrorist favorite um, American football team? What's the terrorist favorite American football team? The New York Jets. I know Stevens. That joke wasn't the best, but um, that's your humor, you know, a little pun. Well, in respect to those that had lost their lives. And, yeah, th you yeah, th thank you. Oh Mom. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Steven, you jerk. No, that's not. I used to like get. I would get mad at kids that would like when I was in school that would make fun of 9/11. I'm like, that's not funny. Hey, uh, where are your parents, Stephen? What are they in ISIS? Where's no, your family? My parents are not in ISIS. You come from a Taliban family? Yeah, with those they jokes. Came to Maryland and, and yeah. Never mind. That didn't make yeah. sense. So now I get to Staten Island, and uh, there's a massive crowd of people there, like trying to get on the buses to get home. They didn't even know where they were going. I met my cousin. He was a bus dispatcher, and he saw me in the crowd, and he hugged me. And he's like, when I saw those buildings come down, and I didn't know what he was talking about. The buildings came down? Yeah. Then that's when I found out that that's what that was. The buildings came down. That's what you thought the sniper you Right, thought. right. That's that was the, the building came collapsing. Down. And all the debris was coming to like 10 blocks away down to the ferry terminal. Yeah, I remember and the I skies were that's black. That's probably when I said I maybe I better get Jeff. When the buildings came down, yeah. yeah oh, like, you could right. hear it from the from the house. No, I couldn't. I hear would have been it, the last kid in school. Everybody's watching on TV. I was probably the last kid in school to get picked <laughs> up. The, the most screwed up in the head. <laughs> I should. I wish I got out of there and walked out like Stephen, but I was just a child. You know, I yeah. wouldn't even know which direction to go in. Right. I would have got lost. You know, I would have been the to first time you got lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. That's My another story. That's right. another story. That's another story. Yeah. I was almost home. And I saw somebody on the bus had a uh, cell phone. She was able to talk to somebody. I asked her if I could use it. And I called home. And then I think it was Glenna that answered our phone. And she just said, where are you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm you know, like a mile away. And that's when Stephen walked down to the bus stop with Ernie, our dog. And he just met me at the bus stop. And as I'm walking up the street with Steve and the dog, you and daddy pulled up in the car and you got my, right our, out my, our, my father your, our you father. and dad yeah my father came out of the car <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a new york thing to talk that way because i still talk about my i refer to my parents yeah that, like, yeah yeah we can move past it quick okay <laughs> don't make this a hostile environment yeah, i swear i swear <laughs> we're getting there hey one more steven's 9 11 taliban jokes <laughs> it's gonna be hostile i'm kidding steven you have fun with this we love you they watch the show they love you too they we, i'm you know. so scared to give the wrong impression first impression <laughs> he started off with it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get there. We'll, we'll get there we'll get there we're gonna get we're gonna after we get the story done we're gonna go all taliban jokes so it's gonna picture like you're just in afghanistan doing stand up at an open mic just in in the middle of afghanistan you could picture you doing that but let's get through the story first so you know i see you and dad pull up in the car and for you i don't even think he stopped the car and you jumped out and you ran and you just hugged me mm -hmm. and the neighbors they were all outside too and prior to that prior we were in our house and like all the neighbors were having like a prayer vigil everybody silently pray praying watching the tv 
And then, like, uh, when she came home, then, you know, like, it ter- turned to jubilation mm-hmm. for us anyway, you know. Yeah, and you gave me the flower to go give to her. And then I give you the rose from the rose garden. Yeah. I remember that. This yes. memory I'll never forget. Like, I don't remember anything from school or, you know, a lot of stuff I blocked out. But, <laughs> yeah, that's a memory that I'll never forget. Well, sure, that was some day. Yeah. All right, Steven, think- you want to hit us with some nicest jokes? I mean, well, I'm yeah, just, I can. Well, I just don't want to, I don't go want ahead, to go Steven. to... Well, What's the best thing about ISIS tricks? Uh, I don't know. The execution. <laughs> <laughs> These are bad. I would say that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one, Steven. You nailed that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Did you boo? Kyle, did you hit him with booze? You're hurting his confidence. No, I hit him with a gasp. It's 20 years. The whole too soon <laughs> stuff. We dealt with that our whole life. I've been dying to make 9 11 jokes. It, Pete Davidson, his his dad died. Uh, his, his dad, was his a dad passed away. Yeah, yes. oh, R.I.P. Oh, yeah. He wrote a movie about his life experience. You mm-hmm. know, King of Staten the Island. King of Staten King Island. Staten yeah. Island. Yeah. So a really yeah. good it's movie. Like crown. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What does that make? What does that make you, Jeff? If he's a like king, you want to be the king, though, right? Like you're like. Makes- aren't you trying to fight for that title? The movie was about his dad passing away in 9-11, Stephen, so I take probably keeping my mom over getting a movie deal. Thank you. I, oh, I get no, to yeah, do a podcast with oh, you no, now no, instead no, of yeah, being the I king mean, of Staten Island. <laughs> you want to talk shit, Stephen? Now you got me cursing in front of my parents. Yeah, I get sensitive because <laughs> Pete Davidson is the one guy from Staten Island. Him and maybe Vinny <laughs> are the only guys that are more successful. Now there's some TikTokers that are That's coming up sells, or whatever. Right? Let me have my moment, you know? Have my <laughs> little moment where Let I... Let me lighten the mood a bit. I'll beat the shit out of Pete Davidson. If he was in here right now, one shot, I would would completely neutralize him and he would be unconscious <laughs> yeah that's what i think r.i.p to his father but him and i in a, in a one-on-one anything mma jiu-jitsu kung fu taekwondo any type of combat sport he wants to go i'd like me to see pete you davidson. meet i'd like to see you meet pete davidson i would like to yeah, meet him too i feel like if he was yeah. here he would 100 percent agree that you could beat him <laughs> yeah he wouldn't even care no. <laughs> he would be like yeah whatever man I, I like i don't you give two a would shit hit it off and be so funny together i know we would probably be good friends hopefully i meet him one day we could talk about you know mm-hmm. our, our nine um, no <laughs> no no <laughs> Just Staten Island experience. Just yeah. Just living on Staten Island. Yeah, that we talk about that. Are you guys about the same age? Because his father was going into the building to save mm-hmm. people. So he's a hero, right, you know? Right, Like, I'm lucky that you got out. I'm mm-hmm. grateful, thank God. But, you know, like, yeah, his dad died. He took a vow, sure. you know, to save people, you know, put his life at risk to save other people. Sure. And he stuck to it. Damn. Man, Can I tell you, those, when, all those guys are heroes that went up there and they were, as everybody was running out, freaking out, they're running in. You know, when that building, when that plane was That's hit. That's why I wore this shirt, USA. I just got such a deeper respect for firefighters and police and also those that go to war just picture like fourth of july like with all the fireworks and like 10 times worse you know these are bombs or the world trade center somebody did bomb it in 1993 you didn't work there then right no but my sister did yeah yeah and she got out that day too like she had a evacuate like that but they bombed the basement they tried yeah. to get the whole thing to fall down from bombing the basement but it failed it was a failed mission it was the same who, who bombed it was it is that the Taliban again? i think so it was probably, uh, probably yeah ISIS. yeah mm-hmm. but it was just a van that blew up and they weren't mm-hmm. able to find out yeah they right. van of explosives in the basement and, and, yeah, and, and about a few people one. died yeah so but it was uh, it was nowhere near you no, know but they were always they always had uh police sniffing um police i mean bomb Do- sniffing, bomb sniffing dogs, dogs yeah in there so you'd always see all that. So it always gave Nerf's you that sense of- Nerf's a bomb laying dog <laughs> with that <laughs> ass of his. <laughs> he is. Ooh. Oh, you, you're Nerf. lucky you're not here, Stephen, today. Nerf is ripping ass today. I have a really good today. question for Mrs. Wedick. Okay. I have two new- <laughs> What was that? <laughs> is that Nerf? Bush. Wait. What, what do you- So I don't know if y'all heard, but like there's like the conspiracy theories about how- Bush did 9-11. Oh. What is your opinions on that? Oh, you want that. now you want to I get into the stupid. conspiracy thing? I, Mom, what do you think? Building 7? You think the whole thing was an inside I, job? That was weird how that happened. How did I, that one fall it down? fell down. I don't know. Some of those, some of those papers hit it and knocked it over. No, uh, I I don't know. It wasn't. It you just was, des- you described the the buildings falling. The sound was like what? It was just like repetitive fire. It sounded like a oh. like a plan. Like you said, like like, a, do, like do, when do. you watch buildings get demolished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mush. Um, like it sounded like a sniper was yeah. hitting the the uh, really? ferry terminal. Because it, like, it was like, da 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 you know, then, to the... Have then, another beer, Dad. Let's get into conspiracy stuff like Joe Rogan. This is what he does. He gets his guests <laughs> high. He got Elon Musk to smoke weed. And then Tesla's stock drop. This is what I'm doing to you well, right wait now. Wait a second. Let me just tell you a story. So now your mother comes home totally traumatized. For the next 
uh, three, four days, she's watching every bit of news, mm -hmm. every news network. She's got it. She's flipping stations, totally obsessed with the coverage of this. And I'm saying, this is not healthy. I said, how about, you know, if I get her outside to go for a little bicycle ride, get her out, clear her head. Yeah. And so I made the suggestion. Maria, how about we go out for a ride? What'd she say to you? How about you join the army? She says, <laughs> I just ran down 40 flights of stairs <laughs> across this glass. Three days ago. <laughs> watching people fall from the building. Uh, my legs are killing me. And you want me to go for a... She ripped me a new rear end. And I said, oh, excuse me. And I think yeah. I might have went out for a bicycle ride. On your that. own. Whoa. It is a good suggestion because it is... It is very unhealthy just looking at the mm -hmm. news. When COVID first started, I just watched the news all day yeah. and it was so bad for my mental health. And then you look at social media nowadays and it's just the bad news that you get. So mm -hmm. if there's a fire on the other side of the world or like something mm -hmm. happens, you know about everything. You just feel like everything's caving in. The world is ending at all times. You know, it was just so surreal to me at first. I kind of felt like it was in a movie. Like, how could this be happening? And then I would think, oh, I got to get this something uh, It's in my desk. Oh, wait a minute. My desk isn't there anymore. Oh, I don't have that. Wait, I'm not going to work tomorrow. Like your pictures and stuff on yes. your desk? Yes. You thought that uh, we were going to be there. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, I got to get this. I got to do that. That's like, another thing. That woman, Shelly, she took time to shut down the computers so nobody could get access to yeah. the data. Um, she did a lot of things, closed up the office and everything. Locked it, shut the you lights. You talk about the ultimate waste of time because everything was gone. Yeah. She went to the uh, bathroom. The toilets oh. were overflowing. Everything and was all screwed up in the whole building. Did, anyway, uh, did, did Shelly, Shelly make it out? She did make it out, but she just made it out. Oh, really? Before really? collapse? Mm-hmm. So wow. if you would have waited 20 more minutes, you would have... She waited 10 minutes and she got let out at a different part of the building and your trip your trip out here while you were driving across country you met up with shelly where yes in columbus ohio that's so where she, she lives was. out there yes. now she yeah. moved far away from new york she did but shelly used to back up all the computer stuff once a week and luckily she grabbed the backup and she had that otherwise that's what oscar would do if this place was <laughs> yeah. got hit by a plane or something he, he would grab the hard drives <laughs> yeah that's the only reason i was able to make the documentary because like oscar organizes all the footage and that's stuff, great that's you know yeah there's a good job on that yeah she forgets to roll the audio sometimes so what we do is record <laughs> good audio. job oscar but yeah he's good. a little shell i got and a little shelly in there and even steven <laughs> yeah. yeah uh they contacted <laughs> shelly <laughs> oh, oh. just right? give steven a participation <laughs> medal for that one <laughs> 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 nice try steven today's episode is sponsored by raycon okay first of all i'm supposed to have the raycon earbuds here but i don't have them because they're in my gym bag i've been using them to run i'm trying to be authentic here i use them you know i, I will put them on the screen uh, i can't get to my gym bag right now but no matter how you're feeling about getting back out there there's no denying it's just an adjustment when the world gets too loud something i love to do is create my own soundtrack by popping in my raycon wireless earbuds sometimes you need some upbeat music to pump you up before you see people or to stay calm with some guided meditation. I use my Raycon earbuds to listen to the Rocky soundtrack over and over again to get through my runs. Let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. They come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort, and unlike some other brands, they don't stick out of, e out of your ears. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life, so you can listen to whatever you want. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, and they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. So you really can't lose? Give them a try. You'll see what I mean. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. Listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash jefffm. To save 15% off Raycons, buyraycon.com slash jefffm. Buyraycon.com slash jefffm. All right, back on with the show. This is an interesting story. So now I go visit Shelly. She comes out with something. She says, I have something to show you. Where I worked... We used to um, give exams to people, and if they passed them, they got certified. We had an embosser mm -hmm. and said that what I worked for was called the Market Technicians Association. You would get a certificate. That banana couldn't wait, Stephen. <laughs> this is not even him joking. You went to go get a banana during my mom's 9-11 story. They eat the banana. Spit That's it out. Okay. Spit the banana out. Why? Spit it out. What it you doesn't have in your bother mouth. me. He 
He looks um, like Curious George. And look, you didn't even make your bed uh, for this interview. You didn't even make your bed. You didn't even make your bed back there. I should have just let him eat the banana. Now I saw him spit it out in the bag. Your your mic's off. We're done with you. I needed to get my. I need to get water for my third. You're fired. He now Nerf is the lowest one on the totem pole. You know, like when you get a uh, something notarized, they have that yeah, seal the stamp. The stamp. She had they, one of those all burned up. Yeah, they found it like two years later in the rubble. Really? Oh wow! And because it said Market Technicians Association, they located her, and I guess however they found out, I don't know, but it got sent to her. Wow! That's and it wasn't the whole seal. I mean, it was just half, half of it, but it was and burnt. It was burnt. Yeah. Also, uh, along those lines, when they were going through the rubble, which they did on Staten Island. They shipped all the rubble to Staten Island, <laughs> and then they sifted through for for Because we had the dump. We had yeah, yes. the Staten remains Island dump. and other stuff like that. They found my niece's husband's badge. badge. He mm -hmm. had left his badge in his desk on the 80th floor. They thought they found the badge of a deceased uh police officer oh and man. only to you know when they traced it back only to find out that he he had been you know made it out but he could have if he w wanted to just go off the grid he could have just been like oh i died there <laughs> Wait, and then like you know <laughs> just made it hope they find that crushed up badge. it was just yeah. his badge on the 80th floor he wasn't on the 80th floor himself? right it was oh, okay in his, it was uh, in his desk, in his desk. desk. yes okay so he wasn't in the building it was just no, over there he, he was he downstairs was like getting coffee which oh, was a good wow. thing but the, the badge too was all crumpled and, and mad. Some cop, what did he leave his gun up there too? <laughs> his gun in his badge, you want to get a coffee and donuts? He probably had six guns on him anyway. <laughs> What's one one in his shoe, one in his sock, <laughs> knife on him. Do you remember riding past the dump and you would see like a crushed fire truck? I remember riding past oh, the wow. dump and just the stench was just, yeah. it, it, it stuck in the car. Oh. Everywhere in Staten Island just smelled like crap. You know, and, and you'd see all the crushed vehicles, but the fire truck that, and all the cop cars and so all the rubble from the buildings collapsing just came to Staten Island. Yes, a lot of people that helped in the cleanup got sick from oh. the chemicals, asbestos, asbestos, and 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 I remember the governor of New Jersey at that time was saying, "No, no, it's safe there." But she was the ex-governor. She's Christy the uh, Christy Whitman, Whitman, right? And she was like the head of the EPA or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And she was telling, oh, "It's perfectly, it's perfectly safe." safe. But, but a friend of mine from work suggested that I take Mrs. Wittick into Manhattan because the experience of going through that sometime when she returned, it may be really traumatic. So at your own like leisure and, and uh, with her comfort level, go into Manhattan and see, you know, like if you could deal with the situation. So uh, that's what we did. And it must have been a month or two later. Mm -hmm. And it stunk, and there mm. was ash and stuff like that all over. The all place. Of the surrounding buildings, Horrible. all for blocks and blocks, all that ash. Right. They had happened. Obviously, they took us home from school, but then the next day, school was canceled, and like it took a while for things to get back yeah. up and running. Like everything kind of shut down, kind of mm -hmm. like the Hello. pandemic. That's the only thing I compare it to. It's like when everything like mm -hmm. happens, like this doesn't make sense. This feels mm -hmm. like a movie. But we were outside, and you just saw the skies were just black from all the mm -hmm. like. It was such a huge fire. Mm -hmm. That the skies were black over Staten Island. Yeah. And you know, how many miles is it? From our house to the World Trade Center is 13 miles. Really? Mm -hmm. That's it? Yep. Back then, like probably a year after it happened, a lot of YouTube videos started surfacing, like these conspiracy videos. And at the time, it made so much sense. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this was an inside job. What the hell's right. going on? Like, I believed it for like a year. But then I talked to you and you, you don't believe in any of those conspiracy things, you think? I, I don't know. I mean, I heard things like there was um, something between Osama bin Laden and the Bushes. There was like an oil deal gone wrong or something like that. And, and he was angry with the Bushes. So the Bushes had, they were for it was for money, oil something, money? Something, yeah. They wanted a reason like, to take a on. hit at I him? I don't know. Don't I mean, I heard like that. that. I'm not saying I believe that, but that's one of the conspiracy theories. Yeah. But it it's could, just it's like just, uh, Pearl Harbor. They yeah. say that they purposely allowed that to happen. They took some of our ships out of port and let them bomb the rest of it, but it was a good reason for us to get into war and rah, rah, rah. You know, that was ridiculous. How do you explain Building 7 then, Dad? How did that um, one fall down? That was emergency, uh, you know, like... Um, Headquarters. What do they build that foundation I, on chopsticks, no, I, I on toothpicks? They, I'm not sure if they had something in the building that uh, just weakened went, and, you know, and went on and, fire. Yeah. Huh. And 
from the impact of everything, maybe. But those those buildings were close. You have two tremendous towers and a third building. Across the street, yeah. right? That's they got the sheep just... like you to believe it. <laughs> okay. Oh, it fell down because it was close to another building that fell down. That, that never happened in history. Another building <laughs> fell down because it, it was next to another building that was on fire. I don't know, Dad. If this was Joe Rogan, he I don't I think he'd be full blown uh, that, conspiracy. Why don't you have another beer? This was a. <laughs> okay. This was, that's, uh, the, that's the wow. fire there. Yeah, that's the location. That's the fire from Spain. Mm. Yeah, see the mm -hmm. tip, the very skinny tip of Staten Island. Uh, my brother had a boat, and we used to sail it out of that little. I wish we had, we could circle where, where, it. Where's Staten that island? Is that island? that where, shape? Is that? Uh, right what is it shaped like? Go down far, that whole island. The oh, island. Oh, that's that's the far island. end of Staten Island. We used to sail up. You can see my old baseball field, Mid Island. Like there's that edge there. That's where my brother's school is. That's facing uh, where the towers were. Oh. He saw like straight up all this. He had a perfect view of it. And then he walked home. We lived in the middle of the island. We were like a, kind of mid island, right? Mm. There, there you go. <laughs> He's cracking another one. Let's get this party started now. All right. We got the story done. Now we can sound bite this, score this baby. You can do whatever you want. Okay, Steven, it was great talking to you. Yeah, we hope Hello? we get a chance uh, to meet Steven. you in person. You're fired. Right, bye, Steven. Right. Okay, bye, Steven. Bye, Steve. Bye-bye. If someone was on the street of the World Trade Center when it collapsed, are like they are in a bad spot? Like, I'm are building people that were falling out of the building landed on other people that were on the street oh, and wow. killed them. A priest was killed, I yes. think. Yes, mm -hmm. Father Michael Judge. They, he got they hit showed, by a body. They show pic carrying him. He went to give last rites, and they show a picture of him being carried, his dead body. And that upset me too when I saw that because I used to go to that church. Mm hmm. He was a priest there, and you know he gets a call, the World Trade Center, you know, yeah, and he goes over there to assist, and and he gets killed. Uh, the front page of the paper, the, like the next day, had the guy that I saw jump. Yeah, the New York Times or the, the Time, Time uh, Magazine or something. Oh, or, or Post. They showed the New York, the New York Post. Post showed the guy, yes. falling man or something. Yes, and it was upside down, and yes. it was just such, oh, a, such yeah. a crazy yes. photo. Yeah, here he is dressed for work. And like I said, I was, you know, I, you get familiar with people that you see every day and they're mm -hmm. in the elevator with you and you know, they're going up to higher floors and days later you just start thinking, oh, I wonder how they're doing. I wonder whatever happened to them or mm -hmm. if they made it out. And I remember when I was going down the stairwell, firemen going up and I remember just trying to look right in the firemen's eyes. I wanted to remember their faces. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, when they showed you the firemen that passed away. And I remember seeing those certain firemen. I passed them in the stairwell. Yeah. They were going up and I was going down and I'm thinking, what could they do? There's this massive building that's on fire and how can they save people? Mm -hmm. I guess try and get people out as much as they can, you know, assist them in getting out. So for a long time, I was pretty messed up. I could, I could say pro Post post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, I felt mm -hmm. it with that Mark Roy power bat. He used to lay into me with. <laughs> Took yeah. it out on you, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But a lot of those times, I deserved it. You did. I was a bad kid. Is somebody calling? Hello, just a video. this is Mr. Wittick and Jeff. I would love to know if there's anything you miss about the World Trade Towers. What do you miss most and why? Thank you for taking the question and have a great day. Rachel, I just loved being- She's not here, mom. It's a video that she sent in. <laughs> oh, okay. But you can just, you know, she'll watch this when it comes out in a couple days. But I can answer it. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, I loved working there because you just saw so many different people and it was just a nice, beautiful- Beautiful place to work. Where I worked on the 44th floor, I had um, the one conference room there. We could see miles around. You know, you could just, you had a perfect view. It was stunning. Yeah. And it was just a great place to work. You always loved the city. You, I did, you would, and I still do. Yeah, mm -hmm. you still do. Otherwise, you guys would have moved out of there a long time ago. Now you're both retired. He's dying to get the hell out of there. <laughs> he drives down in Staten Island with little, just a little bit of traffic. God damn it, this rat island, this sons of bitches, bastard, yelling at me. You, yeah. you would call me a bastard. That doesn't even make sense because you are my father. You're alive. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be like, you dirty bastard. <laughs> It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> How are, it's so contradicting for you to call me a dirty bastard yeah. when you're my father. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a bastard so, son. So what are you saying? That you're, yeah, it, whatever. what are you saying? A lot of things didn't make sense growing up. That's why I'm all screwed up. So I'm happy we got to clear this up. Let's get to the next question. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Fem. I'm from the Netherlands. And my question was, when Jeff was a child, what was the 
a thing that you were most proudest of that what he accomplished? He was a hustler. But can I take a crack at it? Go ahead. He was very coachable as an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he used to play uh, Little League Baseball, and he would follow instruction. And I I thought that was really great. Mm -hmm. I love sports. I love uh, competition motivated me a lot. Until you turned 12, and then you knew everything. Well, 9-11 happened, and then I was like, okay, we could die at any second. You know what? What am I doing homework for? What am I listening to the law and the, the rules? You know? That's just when I was like, whatever, I'm going to do what I want. And then I learned the hard way. I had a lot of life lessons, but you know, I had good hair. That's one thing that we could say yep. that we were proud of me for. Yep. I always had good hair. Yeah. There was that folder. This is like a book report that I did, I guess, when I was like doesn't 12. Doesn't it say it or, on there? It doesn't say the year on it, but it's ABC Project. And I had to write a story for every letter in the alphabet. My first thing, A, A is for athlete. I'm definitely an athletic person. I love to play basketball and baseball. I would rather play sports than do my homework. I also like doing weightlifting. I have exercise equipment at my home. I like getting my friends over and having a weightlifting competition. And things have not changed. Yeah, it's insane that this is what I was writing when I was 12. Like there's just some stuff in here like E is for entertainment. I love entertainment. I would I love TV and movies. I would love to like make TV and movies and do my whole hold on i can't i still can't read (laughs) i skipped the reading i would have better grades in school i would even do my homework i love to watch tv in my free time i've never bored i would rather watch tv than do my homework one of my favorite shows to watch on tv are the simpsons and my favorite movie is pootie tang pootie tang is about a guy that doesn't speak english because he made up his own language and he fights crime with his belt i think it's very funny and entertaining (laughs) pootie tang was the stupidest movie of all time it made no sense it It was about a guy that would whip people with his belt and fight crime and he just made up this hood like it's a cartoon like, or is it like a live it's a movie but it was just a ridiculous stupid movie that didn't make any sense and it's the same type of comedy that i make till this day and i was writing this when i was 12 i'm still the same exact person as i was at this age uh-huh. if it's for friday friday's my favorite day of the week because it's when school ends <laughs> games i enjoy playing games all types of games board games and sports i really like to play games that you have to be athletic to play such as sports i'm the best at those mind games are fun but i would rather play basketball basketball or baseball than a board game because I spend a lot more time practicing playing sports than playing a board game. I would rather play play sports because I train for them. I'm not training to play Monopoly. I'd rather do something that I'm experiencing. And look at me now. This is insane to me because everything I'm doing now, H you wrote about. is for hair. I like to cut and style hair. It might sound pretty feminine, but I only cut boy's hair and I am not gay. I wrote this in a book report. <laughs> it's it's in the... It's, <laughs> there I put it is, that, black and white. And I got oh, an 85 boy. on this. I got, they graded this good. Uh-huh. I mean, just what... A, <laughs> what? I mean, this. Uh, did you check this before I sent it in? Like, maybe you shouldn't shouldn't write that in there? I was like... You yeah, better hide like that boys. from the FBI. <laughs> that's a profile of you and him. <laughs> And if yeah. that happens, they're coming for you. I said, it might sound pretty feminine, but I only cut boys' hair and I am not gay. I needed to clarify that when I was 12 years old in my book report. Wow. And I said, right now, I only have one razor and a pair of scissors, but it works for me. The only reason I don't have good equipment is because I don't charge for the haircuts I give. And I only know how to give three haircuts. <laughs> it's the same to this day. <laughs> and I get by with the equipment I have. Haircut All my shape. friends come to me for haircuts because I give them the best tape up and fade. And that's the most popular. But my favorite is the shape up, blah, blah, blah. The reason I don't charge any of my friends is because I am practicing on their hair. And I appreciate that they trust me. All I like to hear is good job. I really like it. And that's good enough for me. Mm-hmm. This is when I was 20. 12. And then you got me clippers for my 14th birthday because that's what I, I wanted. And that became my career. And yeah. now that's what got me to meet everyone and then maintain right. relationships with people. And now I, I can do all this stuff. And I made a show out of it. And yeah, I mean, it's on hiatus now, but we're working, we're shooting stuff for it. We're making the hair products. And from when I was a child, I wanted to do this and I wanted to find a way to reach everyone. I just loved making people feel better by doing their hair. And now I'm making hair products that I yeah. can sell to everyone all over the world mm-hmm. rather than just own a barber shop and cut people in Staten Island scumbags, you know, who cares <laughs> if I make them happy over and over again. Yeah. I want to be able to reach everyone with this. And this is like a perfect thing. Like back since I was 12, this was my dream. I didn't fake this. This is real. My yeah. mom brought this and like it's graded i got 85 Mm -hmm. on it i read through this last night i was like almost tearing up because this is just everything that i wanted to do as a kid i'm doing now Mm -hmm. okay i i'm living out my dreams i'm getting to do what i wanted to do and that's because i didn't go to school i didn't listen to my parents that's how you do it kids 
No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I had good parents, and yeah, you guys kept me in line. That Mark McGuire power bat. Do you pay until you do this? <laughs> um, you whipped the shit out of me with that belt that one time um, in front of all my friends, that traumatizing story where I was out not listening to you guys. I stayed out all night, and you were like, I'm going to go make an example out of them. And you came with a dog leash. It wasn't mm -hmm. a hard leather belt, but it looked worse than what it was. So when I was out there in front of all my friends acting cool, you came over there and you started whipping me with this belt. Yeah, it was showtime. <laughs> yeah, you're putting on a show. Yeah. It was like WWE, but it hurt still a little bit. No, it did not. It was more the fear of like embarrassment that my mm -hmm. friends are seeing me get my ass beat by my father in front of, you know, all of them. And I'm gonna have to deal with this now through the rest of, you know, my times that i spent well, with him we we don't want to look like child beaters but we no i, I deserved it i was a terrible you. kid yeah, yeah. I, I got arrested my first time at what 15 i got taken home by the cops from that fight at pizza hut down the street i think the, oh right the cops right. got me home and right. then that was like, I, I was very close to getting arrested, but they gave me a warning slap mm -hmm. on the wrist. Mm -hmm. I think I got arrested a year later and I was in and out of jail. You guys had to bail me out. Mm -hmm. Karen and Steven, they had no, never, they never done anything wrong. And then you got me, who's just the complete opposite. Just every, every rule in the book I was breaking. And then I turned out to be the favorite after all. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, Karen and Steven. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you're my mom's favorite. You, you you prefer Karen. And for the record, I don't have a favorite child. I love them all equally the same. That's not what I heard. That's not, that's, I've, I have proof of that, but we don't have to get into it, whatever. This is not, this is very nice. I'm happy you brought me this stuff, Mom. I don't know where you're hiding all this stuff. Uh, this I saved thing, everything. Look, I'm a goddamn artist. I, drew, I painted that. I drew that. Crayoned it in. I'm a goddamn artist. You could see the reflection. Even I put the reflection of the house in the lake, the shadows from the sun up here. You foreshadowed. <laughs> oh, a lake. Uh, yeah, a lake. This was in there? 1995. So I was five years old when I did this. This this elite level of crayoning. Is that David Dobrik on there? Yeah, I put a little David in there swinging an excavator. That's what I drew. Nice. Crazy. <laughs> Let's take one more call. Oh, there he is, Arthur. This is the guy I have on my on my refrigerator. Oh, okay. His mom is my friend over in the in the UK. She lives in Liverpool, and she sent me a bunch of stuff. And I talked to Arthur once a month. She's a Godfather, the tier that was oh, retired okay. on Patreon. Yeah. So yeah. Do, we do the Facetimes once a month. He was getting bullied because he's autistic and just had, had some trouble with some kids at school, some bad kids. So I told him to get into boxing. I suggested that maybe if he does something athletic, some fitness. And, yeah. Even just having a little bit of experience in some sort of combat sports or self-defense can help you with confidence through anything in life. Because Steven is always scared to walk down the street to the liquor store because it's kind of a bad neighborhood around here. Mm -hmm. I tell Steven, like, train, just get yourself confident that you can defend yourself in any situation. And then maybe that'll help you with confidence through whatever else you want to do if he wants to go mm -hmm. do stand-up comedy yeah. or whatever else it is. It just doesn't hurt to have a little confidence in Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Because yeah. I feel like I'll beat up 99. Yeah, I'm getting to it. Let me, let's listen to the kid's question, yeah. huh? Hi, Jeff. It's Arthur. I just said I wanted to, to, to say thanks for inspiring me to do boxing. Just maybe you and me all means want to do boxing together in England. And means after the pandemic is over. Bye. I love it. I love I love his accent. Yeah, they have the best accent. Yes. Yeah, my mom wonderful. loves the Beatles. You play the Beatles every day. Mm -hmm. Growing up, all the songs that I play now, the Beatles, it reminds me of, like waking up at home with you guys, mm -hmm. fighting, you know, screaming at each other. <laughs> Dennis, what'd you do with all the money? You gambled the money. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's a plot of blow. That's I, I mix my, my childhood up with movies. <laughs> no, you guys wouldn't really fight, but I remember the Beatles would always be playing before oh, yeah. I went to school. That's what we wake up to every day. So it's not a bad thing to wake up to. Yeah, Beatle music. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you love his accent. You love. Hell you would yeah. love Liam's accent. Even love even Liam's. Lincoln. Lincoln's from Ohio, but he somehow <laughs> has like no a sense at all. <laughs> like a, a you Scottish. Know, you, uh, you told me that was Liam before, but I thought it, it was, was Lincoln. Lincoln. <laughs> no, Lincoln just freestyles. He just he's like Pootie Tang. He just makes up his own <laughs> slang style, and you know I always oh, yeah. dream that I, I I could do that one day. I'm gonna I'm gonna start making up my own language. Say whatever I want. If you don't understand. Sammy, who cares? It was nice having you guys here. It was that, a pleasure. That, there's Nerf over there. He's going, looking to get in the bathroom, press some sound bites himself, it looks like. I just want to say uh, to all the fans out there, the ones that have reached out to me during your accident and other issues that have happened, yeah. I really appreciate their kind sentiments and uh, it was nice talking to them all and it really helped. You really helped me too. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Happy 9-11. 9-11 special. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.
20 year anniversary. On the corner, he was dealing in drugs. Yep. Uh-huh. Got himself a barber's chair and gave us some cuts. Now, the podcast of his life, he'll talk about it with us. Uh, now it's Jeff. 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 <laughs> That's terrible. 9 11. 9 11.